Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have a Mortlach 2008 to 2021. Yay, it was two bourbon barrels that they married together. One bourbon barrel was the number 80026, and the other one, no, 76, and the other one was 80090. So this is Signatory Vintage. This is the Cast Strength Edition. Some people actually call this more or less a flower vase over here in Germany. And um, it goes for the price of 84 euros 90. 56.9% um, alcohol by volume. You get this massive cork. You get this beautiful bottle. You get this aluminum or tin um, case. Let's just call it that. And it's whiskey base number 179627. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this is a German exclusive. There were 458 bottles. And um, when it came out, that was from Kirsch, our importer. They actually um, had a, what did they have? They had a Pultney. They had a, um, oh, I'm terrible with my memory at the moment. I'm sorry. So they had a Bla Bla Ethel, Portney, Mortlach, Ben Riach, and an Alte Bain. And I actually bought um, all five of those. And I'm going to be doing videos about those um, slowly but surely. All right. Very, very good. So, um, yeah, I basically said everything. Um, the 13th of March, 2008. The distillation date, the 12th of February uh, 2021. So it's just uh, basically one month before it turns 13 years old. And um, this is the first one of the very first bottles I have from the year 2021 that I get to taste here together with you. All right. Very, very nice. So um, where are we here? What I'm tasting it against, I hope I don't forget it. This is an eight year old Mortlach. It's also from Signatory Vintage. It is the 2012 to 2020 edition. And it's a small batch edition of the cast strength with 59.9%. So I have a little bottle, sample bottle here that I'll actually do this with. I like Mortlach. I, there was actually a, sec, a, a second Mortlach as well offered. And it was from a sherry cask. And I said, no, if there's a bourbon cask out there, I want it. I think Mortlach from a bourbon cask is beautiful. And to be very, very honest, I think this whiskey is beautiful itself. Now it's 56.9%. Um, it's a tiny, tiny little bit for me. I'm a weakling, as you might know, a little bit on the hot side. And I put a little bit of water in here and it turns into this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful summer whiskey. Um, I really, really do enjoy this. First of all, the nose. <sighs> I get white chocolate. I get a little bit of hazelnuts. I'm getting a little bit of summer type of breeze. I'm getting uh, um, herbs. I'm getting a lot of beautiful, beautiful moments here where I can hardly tell you what I have. Um, it's fruity. It's minty. It's a little bit of, of that, that sweet sandalwood. Um, it's a tiny, tiny little bit here of um, the bourbon goodness that can happen with a quiet cask leaving this whiskey to actually shine and become something absolutely fantastic. Now, the only problem I have, sorry, I do have problems often, is when I taste it, I do get a little bit of that tired barrel cask moment at cask strength. A tiny little bit. So this was in bourbon barrels. It does not say first bourbon barrels. So I'm going to assume, I'm going to make an ass of you and me, that this was actually a a second fill bourbon barrel. So they were used in America for six to eight years. They were used, first of all, for maybe eight years, and then another 12 years. These are assumptions for this. So 12 plus eight plus four. This is about a 25-year-old barrel. That's not much, but it's also something. And it's been used three times. Don't forget, it's like a tea um, bag. If you use it the first time, it's almost too strong. You use it the second time, it might be just right. If you use it the third time, well, it might not have enough. Yeah, I almost forgot to show you the flavor, if you, uh, the flavor, the color. If you look at this, it's actually, um, yeah, okay, I have more in here, but the colors are almost the same here, even though we have a sherry butt and two um, refill hogs heads over here. So um, let's nose it again. Uh, 
I get a tiny little bit of anise over here. By the way, I get a little bit of licorice. This is much darker. This is much more of a forest type of fall autumn whiskey. This is for me head on summer whiskey. This is light and yet a tiny little bit meaty. This is um, white chocolate plus a little bit of nougat. Um, this is um, peppermint or mint with a little bit of the hazelnuts in there. This is absolutely a genuine good whiskey for its price. And I say that knowing that it's a German exclusive. This was a German exclusive. So I'm so sorry that we get great whiskeys over here in Germany. Um, both of these are basically a um, vatting of this was three, this was two different casks. Thank you, Signatory Vintage, for working with Kirsch Import and giving us such great selection in my country so I can show off what we get over here. Mm -hmm. For me, there's a tiny little bit of a rest mineral type of woody type of tired cast note in the back. And it's a tiny, tiny little bit, me, too hot. There's too much pepper, there's too much ginger, there's too much alcohol spice in there. So I take it down to like 43%, 46.9, 43%, not much. I didn't add much water. And it turns into a much more tamed beast. It still remains a Mortlach. A Mortlach is still one of those things like a wild stallion, but now at least it has a saddle on it. It's got a bridle, and you can actually enjoy this whiskey. I can enjoy this whiskey much more. So this is something where I can highly, highly recommend this whiskey. This is, for me, a B-minus whiskey. The value for money is a C, maybe a C-minus. Of course, one of yours better would, less would have been much better. But still, it's a wonderful, wonderful whiskey. And it's in the shops at the moment in Germany. It's sitting around a little bit. Um, no one's buying it. I hope after my video that the stores will be actually um, <laughs> um, swept clean of all their inventory and people will understand how good this whiskey actually is. Mm -hmm. mm. 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 That's my Mortlach. You would think that the warm tubs would actually create more contact with copper. They don't. The condensers actually create more contact. And so if you want a meteor whiskey, you need to have those warm tubs in there. Actually, absolutely fantastic. I like this whiskey a lot. Now, to be honest, I'm almost getting sick and tired of these sherry, dark Coca-Cola type of whiskeys. These dark, overly... Um, um, sherried, just they kill the flavor of the distillery. How can you recognize something? You just have that sherry cask influence, that sherry cask overness, and here you have the character of the distillery coming through like a bouquet in a wonderful summer evening. This is a very good whiskey, in my opinion. I like good Mortlachs, I like Mortlachs from a bourbon barrel, and this is way up there with some of the best I've had. So, my question of the day is, what is your favorite Mortlach? Is it maybe one of their standard releases? Um, so, I did a blind advent calendar, and I had the Mortlach 12, and I had the Mortlach 14, yay, in there. The 14 was really, really good. I still have to do the 16, to be honest. Hmm, I have to look and find that. I really enjoy this, and there was an independent bottling from Signature Vintage that was also fantastic. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you very much for telling others about this crazy guy over here in Europe tasting exotic and rare and exotic whiskeys. I'm giving this, a, as I said, a B minus, a C for the value for money. Um, Germany exclusive, this too. Um, what is your favorite Mortlach whiskey? Thank you very much. All the best. See you soon. Whiskey Jason here. Bye bye.